Hi there everyone, it is currently the 23rd going into the 24th of September 2012 and we are continuing to keep you posted on the very rapidly and very strong now Typhoon Jellowat, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency, 100 gusty up to 120 knot winds. Pressure is down to 925 HPA. This is still short of the strongest storm so far this season, which was Sanba, which occurred last week. That got down to 900 HPA, but still, as you can see here on the satellite imagery, a very symmetrical shape around the storm system. The eye wall is about 20 kilometers wide and very rigid at this time, or excuse me, not the eye wall, but the eye. The eye wall is still right around that and that is where you're going to be seeing these winds that could be gusting up to 120 knots but not just that the areas affecting land look at these areas out here towards the west in the yellows if we take a look at the philippine radar currently you can see here that there already is some very heavy rain bands coming across uh, portions of a size even down towards mindanao actually if you look closely on the loop here you can also tell the general motion of these rain bands coming in from the west moving across these areas now you only see these areas in these circles because that's just where the radars that are being released out of the Philippines can see thus you don't see the whole symmetrical shape of the storm system off there towards the east only can go so far with a radar vice's satellite imagery but one thing that radar can somewhat confirm up is validity of this report right here in uh lagos uh, lagos B. I'm, I'm very well, sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong but 700 and two millimeters in the past 24 hours apparently being reported there this is a remote area it very well could be a little bit less than that but uh, regardless, it, if this is that much, that's an incredible amount of rain. Now, one thing, uh, I have not seen any other reports of this exact amount of number and the flooding subsequently that would be occurring if this was occurring. But sometimes they forget to put the decimal point and it might just be 70.2. This is one thing I want to pull up here. Now, other areas are actually seeing right around that amount, 79.2 down here towards the south and off towards Manila, also right around 56 millimeters. Now, sometimes you might see uh, those two numbers total up that high if it's on the side of a mountain on one of those steeper slopes. So uh, definitely want to continue to look into this. I'll keep you updated if that number is confirming out the be true but it very well could be due to these bands coming through this and also there is that somewhat mountainous terrain that could be squeezing out this rainfall and that is very well could be leading to some serious flow. And this is just a look at the visible slash infrared imagery over the last several hours. And one thing you are seeing it do is sometimes you get storms at this intensity doing a little bit of wobbling when it is into a lack of a steering flow environment. And basically, the storm itself is just controlling everything around it. And take a look at this as it slowly moves off there towards the north. If you look closely, it's doing something like this. The eye is. That's very indicative of a strong and intensifying storm system as it slowly works off there towards the north. I will put more information on these types of wobbles with rapidly intensifying storm systems in the description below if you want to go check a little bit more out on that. So uh, at this time though, seeing that slowly work off there towards the north, still intensifying, expecting to get upwards of a very strong, even an intense typhoon very likely here. And then while it's doing that, one thing that's allowing it to continue to intensify is that moisture flow coming in from the west we've been talking about for several days now. Now, I know on the 20th there was a landslide here in the Philippines in Visayas, and now it does look like all this rainfall is slowly going to work its way towards the north. Right now, the main band is right here across Visayas, northern Mindanao, yet as the storm system tracks farther and farther towards the north, I expect that rain band to also move up towards the north as well. Flooding very well is going to be a major threat across portions of Manila, especially Metro Manila. So if you have any, uh, anybody out there that has any photos or videos and you're continuing to watch this storm system, please do not put yourself in any danger, but always appreciate the sharing of that information. I'm definitely incorporating it into one of these video updates. But look off here just towards the east of Jellawat. We have another area likely going to be coming a tropical depression in the near future. A joint typhoon warning center has actually issued a tropical cyclone formation alert on this area. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the update once we get to the model analysis or the model run out look on this gfs really has been kind of confirming up here but also across the philippines i uh, also want to mention that several flights uh, from manila have also been canceled all just from manila due to the storm system coming through there and it does look like some of these reports have 10 to 20 millimeters generally uh and really adding up per hour across most of a size now once again some of these more isolated areas could be seeing upwards of 100 millimeters an hour especially in the mountainous terrain and here's a look at the track from the Japan Meteorological Agency. 100 gusting up to 140 knots. They're currently calling this a very strong typhoon. Now, the intensity forecast for the 12, next 12 hours 
is going to be going up to a violent typhoon with 915 HPA, expecting to go down to even 910 into the next 24 hours. So Japan Meteorological Agency definitely expecting the storm system to continue to strengthen and deepen, thus making much more dangerous, especially for any boating traveling through this entire area. You know, it's a very busy shipping region of going through the Luzon Strait right through here. The Bashi Channel, then heading off there towards the north to Tokyo and also coming out of China, Hong Kong. So this entire area is definitely going to be very disrupted as far as shipping traffic goes. But also speaking of waves, anywhere near the coastline, any fishermen going out there, definitely very dangerous. If you plan on going out that way, surfing is very bad idea, I do think, across the east coast of the Philippines. Only experienced surfers, but typically when you have... Uh, storm system this strong the waves aren't even good enough to try to surf they're just rough and wind swept and overall not very conducive now let's look at the long range though because going into the 27th and 28th the seven southern japanese islands you very well could be in the key gun of this storm system even over towards taiwan as well let's take a look what the joint typhoon warning center is currently saying on it and they actually have the storm system also moving off here towards the north continuing to intensify up to a max about 140 gusting up to 170 knots that is on a one minute wind scale but regardless that is just some extreme wind and then they have it wavering a little bit farther towards the west due to the high pressure ridge off here towards the east and a little bit of weakening in the trough off there towards the north so just kind of following behind that and then that's starting to move towards the southern japanese islands bringing an abundance of rough waves in it's definitely going to be uh putting a little bit of an added factor here towards the uh, portions of the Senkaku Islands, which are very much at debate you know, quite recently here. But one thing you can see on this model consensus is that is not very consensed right now. Actually, it does show that the uh, European pushes it off there towards the east, just completely missing the entire southern Japanese island chain. Uh, looks like Joint Typhoon Warning Center is basically going along with the AVN here, the aviation model, uh, moving it right towards the western portions. Then you have GFS, which actually still is trying to veer this off towards the northern portions of Luzon. And due to the slow motion of the storm system, unlike Sanba, which was moving rather fast in a clear uh, overall background flow, uh, this one is not quite doing Now here is that GFS model lot looked at, kind of pointed this towards the Philippines. You see it slowly moves off there towards the north, gradually weakening as it, or strengthening, excuse me, as it does so. And then turns a little bit towards the west across the southern portions of Taiwan. Then eventually starts to pull back towards the east. Very erratic storm system, to say the least, into the long range here. And that is why the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and the Japan Meteorological Agency really just kind of stating that beyond three days, I mean, I'm going out to five days, the track forecast is still uh, not 100% sure. Now let's take a look at something else here on this uh, outlook. See just towards the southern portions of Japan, eventually moving off there towards uh, around Iwoto and all these other islands out there is our newer tropical depression if it does form up. Now good news, at least at this time, it does look like it's going to be kicking up some rough waves towards Japan, but it doesn't look like it should be making landfall due to that jet stream really being quite strong through this entire area. About this time of year, it lingers right around here, and that will just tip, pick up the storm system and hopefully turn it towards the east. But still definitely still need to watch this. It's still forming up, still initializing, so uh, the track very well could also be dependent on how close it gets towards our Typhoon Jellowat here. Might actually have a Fujiwara effect going on. So lots of uh, factors going into both of these storm systems, specifically Jellowat here as it continues to wobble and linger just towards the east of the Philippines. We will continue to keep you updated and posted here at Western Pacific weather.com for the latest information but make sure you continue to check in with your WMO approved weather agency either if it's Pegasa, the Japan Meteorological Agency, the Taiwan Weather Bureau or the Central Weather China Weather Bureau out here in China for however the storm might affect you. Now uh, definitely going to continue to watch it here and also at least at this time my thoughts on the track going to be moving off here towards the north uh, should stay just east of the Philippines but uh, definitely some out of rain bands, even tropical storm to a very weak typhoon strength gust might be coming up near the coastlines here. So definitely want to continue to watch that. But beyond that, uh, definitely uh, anywhere from the southern Japanese islands all the way over towards northern Luzon, Taiwan, uh, that would be my cone of air right now. I know I just said my thoughts on the center of the track would be right here, but very well it could still waver off there towards the west. 
and even over towards Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands to include Okinawa. So we're going to keep you updated here. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment box below. Thank you for watching this entire update. Ten minutes long, one of my longer updates. Good grief. So if you did watch all the way through, post your comment section below and tell me what you think. All right, stay safe out there. Bye.